Welcome to the Reva podcast, part of Elysium's Reva Voices from the Borders initiative, a new writing project taking place in schools across Durham and Northumberland County this year. Recorded with the generous support of the National Heritage Lottery Fund and Northumberland County Council and Durham University, we look at different aspects of the Reva era and discuss approaches to creative writing. I'm Jake Murray, Artistic Director of Elysium Theatre Company, and with me is writer and actor Steve Byron. Steve, tell us about the writing that you've done and how you got into writing. Okay, so as a soul, I've always been creative, as, as long as I can remember always being creative, either as a format or a writer or any way of kind of just kind of like being able to communicate creatively. So for in the early part of my years, I was, I, was, I was predominantly an actor, a performer, yet I would always kind of like have stories. I always used to like to write stories, I create stories, and I always enjoyed the idea of being able to write for theatre because I used to love the theatre. I still do love the theatre because I work in the theatre. But for many years, I had so many good ideas, so many great ideas, but I couldn't finish them. I could never finish them. And I had this way of writing that was really, really weird that I thought. So I could never finish anything. And then I went and got involved with some of the writing courses that were going on, specifically one down at Live Theatre in Newcastle. And I learned some really good skills about how to write for theatre. And I took some of those ideas and I managed to finish a play. I actually had a play finished and I looked at it and I was like, oh, that's great, okay. And then what happened was an opportunity came up from a very good friend of mine, another writer and a fantastic writer and performer and asked me to, would I come in and, and, and co-write something with them? So I did that and it, it was a great success. Um, it did really, really well. And off the back of that, that was it. I now kind of, I felt like, okay, well, now we're ready. So I just began to, to write idea, write for theatre and, and, and create these stories that I wanted to create. And I'd kind of, because I'd learned the science bit, I could do it quite efficiently. It wouldn't take too long to, just the way that I kind of, my, the way that I work is to, is to kind of come up with a story, put the skeleton on and build it like I would be building the body, if that makes any sense. So um, I've been very, very fortunate over, you know, we're talking about my first produced play was seven years ago and i've been really really fortunate since then to have a a lot of my work produced and lots of different types of theater you know I, i'm kind of like a a big fan of of history obviously through my reva stuff but also a fan of comedy dark comedy i'm a fan of horror i'm a fan of gritty naturalistic dramas now but also historic stylized kind of writing now kind of like dipping my foot into a little bit so it's kind of been it's been a long process i've kind of like i've been i guess working to be a writer probably since my early 20s so we're talking probably 30 years it's taken to get to where where i am now and it's i still pinch myself I still pinch myself when i'm described as this is the writer steve byron here is steve byron he's a writer it, it still throws me. It still throws me. But it's something that I absolutely love doing. I love creating worlds and creating characters and making work for for actors and directors and that goes into theatres and reaches audiences that enjoy it. Um, so that is that. That's kind of like my journey on kind of on writing. And I, I just um, I have to write now all the time. I think I've got about four or five projects in my head. In fact, even as even as I'm speaking to you, I've got a script on another laptop in front of me for another play that I'm currently developing. So there's always something on the go in my head now. Even when I'm walking around, whether I'm either at work doing something else, or I'm out doing some shopping, or I'm hanging out with my kids, my brain's still ticking over with ideas all the time. You know, it's like I can't imagine not doing. I can't imagine not doing it now. And, you know, and again, I've been really fortunate to have work put on. So with Voices from the Borders, we're going to be asking people to write prose, dramas, audio plays, all of those different things. Why do you think writing and telling these stories is important? It's a heritage thing, you know. We're telling stories about, you know, our descendants, our forefathers, our foremothers. You know, we're talking about our history. You know, you are your history. You are kind of like where you come from. Even even like even it's if it's really 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 remote and kind of on a small scale. But you know, if you're from an area, I think you need to know about your area. And my fear is a lot of young people don't know a lot about maybe where they grown up they, historically you know socially politically what's going on you know and i think that the the period of the the debatable lands and the border rivers was such an important time in the northeast you know as was you know other things the industrial revolution really important in the northeast but the 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 the, the time of the rivers is it's not well known and yet it was a kind of it was the, probably one of the toughest times in the to, to live in this area and i just think to have that sense of of what went on and who it went on with, you know, and who you, you, you know, your possible connections to your family, what their lives were like, 
will give you give you a bit of an insight into kind of like you know that life was very different to what it is like today and i just think history is something that we learn from we learn from history and i think to get an idea of kind of like what was going on with your great 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 times 20 30 grandparents will give you a bit of an insight you know and actually and it's interesting it's exciting do you know what i mean it's like these these your characters these characters who were possibly you know you're related to were larger than life characters you know they were villains they were fighters they were pirates they were you know there were these you know they're the stuff and legends you know that there are things that you know you'd read about in, in kind of you know see on, on it in your films and stuff like that historically they're just it was huge it was huge so and i just think if you can and it, you know it, it's not just about the people it's about the places as well it's about the land it's about the buildings it's about you know you can look around you know if, if, if you're listening to this and you're you're kind of for example out in the in northumberland you can probably walk within like a mile somewhere and probably something important within your history will have happened but you don't know that yet it's also history is a great way of talking about the present when you agree of course it is, because we're talking about things that are important, you know, we're talking about things that are, if you look at the way the Reavers live their lives, you know, and, and if you weren't part of the Reaver clan, this is the other thing, we're talking about the debatable lands and we're talking about the Reavers, there were people who lived in the northeast and in the Scotland who weren't part of these families, they were farmers, you know, they were, they were kind of like, they were just people living in the towns or in the fields and they were they were kind of living amongst these gangsters who were basically could take everything from them in a blink of an eye and they were living in fear and someone may knock on their door and say give me your money otherwise i'll take everything from you you know and it's like it must have been absolutely terrifying if you're not part of one of the bigger families it's it must have been horrible and then you've got all the issues around governments who basically weren't looking after you properly you know, these people would go to the equivalent of the police back then and go, I'm being picked on, I'm being bullied with. And they go, well, okay, there's nothing we can do about it. Do you know what I mean? And it's about power. You know, it's about people not having power, having power, how they feel. Do you know what I mean? To be a child growing up in, in, in those times, it must have been really, really brutal. You know what I mean? Who would then go to war. They'd be pulled in, you know, at a very young age would be, you're now going to go and fight for the King of Scotland or now you're going to go and fight for the Queen of England or now you're going to do this. And now we're going to go and head down as far as North Yorkshire and steal a load of cattle and bring them back. Do you know what I mean? It's like, yeah, there's there's lots going on. And it's like that lack of power must have been horrible. You literally don't know what's going to happen and you've got no one who can really look after you. Superb. So the question now is, as a writer, if you were giving advice to someone who was setting out to write something for Voices from the Borders, where's a good place to start to write a good story? Create the world. Find the world to start with, I would say. So, you know, use a little bit of history. So you do a little bit of reading. Don't, you don't need to do a lot. And then use your imagination, you know, get a sense of, of place. So get a sense of the land. You know, if, if you're writing about somewhere where you're living, you know, you'll have a sense of where, where it is and what it looks like. You know what I mean? Sense of people. You know, I, I kind of like when I'm writing things, I really like to go to town with the world and I'll, I'll create the sights, the sounds, the touches, the smells, the tastes, you know, I'll describe. I'll describe a field till the cows come home, you know, the type of grass, what it looks like, all of that. Because I think that's what you want to do if you, get, if you can create a, a vivid picture. So either your reader or your audience can see it or they can hear it or they can feel it. I think you're onto a winner. I think I don't want to tell people how to write because I, I think everybody writes differently. And I think you'll find your own style and, you, and no one's style is wrong. I, it's a bit like art, really. People, when people say to me, oh, I can't draw. That everybody can draw, we just draw differently, you know, we just draw, and I think it's the same with writing, you know, some people can write in different ways, you know, for example, I can't write poetry, I'm just, I'm, I have no skill in writing poetry whatsoever, really, but I write in a different way, you know, and everybody finds their own way. Find the story you want to tell and tell it really, find the smallest way to tell the story to start with. If you've got an idea for a story, I would say, how does it start, briefly what happens, and how does it end, and then look at that and go, yep, yeah, that's a good start. There's enough happens in that and it's got a good ending. I do think a good ending is important. I talk about with my writing. So when I, years ago, and I'd write things and I never knew how to finish anything. The endings to mine were always really rubbish because they just were. So now I tend to come up with the ending before I've done anything else. Once you've got your story, tell it in the simplest way possible. Once you've done that, look at how it tells and go, yeah, that works well. And then what you can start to do is you can start to flesh it out. So you can start to add the little details. You can start to pick at it because you know you've got your own other story and it works okay. You know that the ending's still there. All the way through the process, things will change all the time. That's okay. You want it to change. If you're working on a computer, though, always keep a copy of what you've done before and don't throw anything away. 
If you're writing on paper, don't crumple anything up and throw it in the bin. Put it to one side and go, I'm not going to use that at the minute. Never throw anything away because chances are you might find an idea that you wish you'd hold, held on to, but it's too late to so hold on to it. And then just spend a bit of time just creating the atmosphere of it, the feel of it, you know, the tensions, the fears, the, the light, the dark, what's funny, what's, what's, what's really, really terrifying, you know, and really build on that. Imagine you're either the audience or you're the reader. And if you were reading it or, and it wasn't yours, would it be exciting and keep playing and keep playing with it, you know, just keep adding things and taking things away. Let other people have a look at it. Don't be, I always, whenever I've written something, I always let people have a look at it because they'll give me feedback and I'll know whether I'm in the going in the right direction or not. And let them be honest as well. That's all right. You know, I always, whenever I write anything. I always send, when I've written, I've written something, I always send it, I'll send it to someone professional um, who maybe works within the industry because I want them from that point of view. But I'll always send one to my mom because my mom will give me the most honest feedback ever. And I want that, do you know what I mean? And it's like that, but that's for me. But yeah, let other people have a look at it, get their thoughts, read it out to people. If you're writing something and you're, you're aiming it for it to be recorded or turned into something is practice reading it out loud, either with family or with friends to get how it sounds. Do you know what I mean? Think about how you describe things. You know, do little exercises beforehand where if you if you're describing something like a place, is how can you describe it where it, it literally by words paints the picture of what it is so the audience can go, I can see it. I can see exactly what it is, you know. It's a you know, that I, I like to do that. I like to kind of I like for the audience to know whether the, the place is warm or cold or light or dark. Just see where you go, have fun. You know, the, the important thing for me within writing is the actual process of it and not so much the end result. Like once it's, it's, I mean, I'm always happy when it's, when it turns out really well, but I enjoy it. I enjoy the creativity and that's maybe why when I said I've always got ideas in my head is because once I've got something, I've finished with it and it's now going into production or something's going to happen with it elsewhere. My brain has to now focus on something else. You've got such rich ideas, you know, around around the Reva stuff and the, the tales from the borders, you know, just have a look around, look, just look at where you are. You know, if, if, if you're kind of small, get your parents to, or your family to take your places, just to go and get an idea of it and kind of get a sense of history. Something else I'll do when I, when I write is I listen to music. Sometimes I listen to music and it helps me evoke things. It helps me kind of create things because that's so little. Find some music to listen to that can, can put you in the right zone. That might help you. Part of it's part of the learning. Enjoy it. Enjoy doing it. Don't give yourself a hard time. Find a story you want to tell. And if you find a story you want to tell, you'll be able to tell it. It's the difference between when you want to do a project or when you've been given a project. That's the difference. Just find the love in it. Uh, what about character? Any any tips how to make an interesting character? Fully develop them. If you decide to create a character, is um, if, you, if you're inventing a character, find out everything about them you possibly can. Right, literally everything to what they like to eat, to what they look like. You can draw what they look like, what their brain works like. Um, are, they, are they a happy person, a sad person? Do they have a temper? What's their favorite color? Anything. Because, and you, this may not become evident in your story, but you will have that as, as, as a, a character that you might be able to pull upon stuff, if that makes sense. So, you know, feel free to draw. You know, if you've got a, a set, a, a load of characters in your story, draw them all and put them next to each other. And just write notes around each character of something. You know, who do they get on with? Who do they not get on with? Why do they get on with? Why do they not get on with that person? You know I mean, just think about yourself, how complex you are as a person. All those things you like, what you don't like, you know, the things that you do, the things that you will not do, the things that you would not do. Do you know what I mean? And think, would those characters do that, not do that? You know, and it's kind of like, you can talk about their families, their friends, their alliances, their enemies, you know, just get as much as you can. Not in a great amount of detail. This is, I guess it's just make lots of notes for yourself that you can keep coming back to and looking at them. Because you might get as well as when you're writing your stories, go, oh, I can use that or that works. I never thought of that. Let's put that in. And as you write the story, you'll learn about the characters as well. So as you write the story, add the notes to the character. So it's a bit like on your work desk, you'll maybe set your story in front of you. And you'll also have on, on separate pages, you'll have all the characters in your story with the notes on them and you can see them. You might have another set of things with places where it happens. Well, I want it to happen by a river and I want this bit to happen in the town and I want this bit to happen in one of the dark towers. Do you know what I mean? And then describe them and think about how the character talks. You know, we all talk in different ways. 
me being an actor, I do different voices. So sometimes when I'm writing, my family must just think that I'm daft as a brush. They can hear me speaking out loud these characters. Do you know what I mean? And I'm in a room on my own with a computer and I'm I'm using my acting to kind of find ways of talking and, and think about, well, I, you know, this is how they would speak. This is how this is how their responses would be. If you're working on dialogue, um, if you're doing something where it's dialogue based, just be aware that your characters are listening to each other. You know, I think that makes for good dialogue, that they're acknowledging what the other person said and taking that on board. It's nice to bring in things in their character that maybe aren't the most important thing in the story. Sometimes I'll, I'll bring up, they'll bring up something and it's, it's very relevant because that's what people do. People, you know, it makes them more human, if that makes sense. It's kind of like just try and create as, as well-rounded characters as you can. It'd be basically, if I asked you a question about your character, you should be able to answer it because you've got all that information there. Very good. Excellent. So you mentioned earlier tension, um, and obviously I always think a really good story has to have tension, even if it's a comedy. There's got to be something that makes you want to carry on reading the story or watching it. And it always has to have conflict. Tell us a little bit about how you can come up with tension and a story that compels you to keep reading. So within the world, there are heroes and there are villains, and most people will side with a hero and will not side with the villain. But villains can be seen in different ways and heroes can be seen in different ways. It's not about a cape or a dark cloak. If you want to build tension in you, find a situation. I tend to use situations that I may have experienced in the 53 years I've been on this planet. You know, situations that I've kind of, oh, that's a bit tough. And I might, I might explore that. So for example, within one of the stories that I wrote about the borders, I did, I wrote a story called Blackmail. And what happens is I have a, I create a character who was a, a gentle farmer who was living with his wife. They're expecting the baby. They've got a really kind of nice life. They're, they're, they're happy with their life. Someone said it's nice, but they're happy with their life. In come these reavers who knock on the door and say, if you give me one of your cattle, I will protect the rest of your cattle. The farmer then makes the deal with the reaver, thinking that's the best thing to do. And then what happens later is the reaver then comes back and goes, we now want two cattle. And the, the farmer now goes, okay, what do I do? I don't like this anymore. I want to say no. But he now knows that the Reavers are from a big family and are very powerful. So there's the tension right there. How do you turn around and go no? And what I also want to do is I want the audience to feel that. So when I'm writing, I want the audience to feel what's going on for the character and get an understanding of it. You know, And they will think to times when they may be in this, not a situation with readers about cattle, but a situation when they wanted to speak up, but they feel that they don't have a voice. So that's what I will do. I will create attention. I will build attention and I'll build tension in the way that I, me as a writer, but also me as an audience will go, oh, this is tense. This is tense. And it's something where part of you makes it want to go away, but the other part is on the edge of your seat because you want to see how it plays out. And I'm terrible because I, I will then push that tension to the point where it's going to break. We'll push it. I've always done it in my writing. Even when I've written for young people, I wrote a story about a pigeon in World War One who goes, is, is taken to the battlefields with his owner and his owner is injured in battle and the pigeon is given a letter by his owner and told to go home with the letter. It's about his, his adventure home to take the letter home to his, the owner's wife. And I put so many dangers in the path of Walter, it was unbelievable that the audience, and they were quite a young audience as well, were literally on the edge of the seat. At one point, I nearly killed it. And there was, and I, as a writer, I sat there and went, what do I do? What do I do? What do I do? What do I do? But I made the decision not to kill him. But I put in a play where for a while, the audience thought that Walsh had been shot down and wasn't going to survive. And you could honestly, the tension in the room when it was produced as a theater piece was incredible. And the sense of relief when he, Walter suddenly was alive again, awake again, sorry was amazing. And as a writer, to, to, to be able to do that, to create, to take people on a journey. So when they leave the theater or they put the book down or they switch off the podcast, they literally for a short second go, Whew, that's a good thing. That's what you want to do. So think when you write and you, know, you create is think of the adventure, think of that adventure think about how do you build that tension to the point where you go, oh, is it too much? Is it too much? Is it too much? Do you know what I mean? That as an audience member, they're going to remember it for a long period of time. They're going to remember it. And, you know, that's kind of what I like to do and what you like to do. I think that's really good advice because the great stories have high stakes. Yeah. I think if you can create characters that we care about, 
that you do, well, you know, that we like and you care about, you don't want anything to happen to them. And then what you do is, is you then throw things in their path that could not be very pleasant. You know, all, all the fairy stories do it. All the, all the fairy tale stories do it. All the great stories do it. And they think of those heroes and villains. Think of those villains that we were absolutely terrified of. Think of those heroes that you just wanted to be on their side all the way through. That's kind of what we're doing here. You're creating new stories, but using that same principle. You go back to your Greek myths, great storytelling, you know, really, really kind of like, you go back to Greek myths. They're usually really, really simple stories, but the stakes are really, really high. And there's often a lesson to be learned as well. You know, you learn things, you know, like why these, why are the villains villains? You know, sometimes it's to do with jealousy. Sometimes it's to do with greed. It's sometimes it's to do with lots of different reasons. And if you put all that in as well, you're on your way. Superb. Some fantastic advice there. So to sum up, if you had some basic advice that you want to say to a young writer who's just setting out, what would it be? Take your time. Don't put pressure on yourself. Enjoy the process. Enjoy the learning. You're never going to know everything. You know, I still, to this day, I meet someone who knows more than me. And I would never admit that I know everything. I Again, when people say, oh, you know, I'm fortunate enough to run writing classes. I sit there and they're going like, why am I doing this? You know, I'm learning all the time. But enjoy the process. Enjoy the making. Enjoy creating stories. Enjoy creating characters. Do you know what I mean? Do it for yourself. Don't worry about anybody else. You know, I write for me. You know, people like it. They like it. You know, not everyone's going to like what you do. You know, most people will, but not everybody will. And that's so I'm I'm totally happy with that because I like it. But enjoy it. Do it because you enjoy it. And that'll make it a happier process. Don't put yourself under too much pressure. If your brain suddenly locks up, that's all right. Walk away from it. Don't get yourself into because the more stressed you get about it, the harder it'll be. You know, just allow yourself. Go for a walk. Go and do something else. Do you know what I mean? Do something. and Because what will happen is your brain will spark up and it'll, when it's ready, you'll go back to it. Yeah, but it's really difficult to sit there when you don't know what to do and force yourself to be creative. Because then what your brain does is it focuses on the stress and the fact that you can't do it and that'll make it even harder. So you just do it when you can. Superb. Thank you, Steve. Excellent stuff. Thank you. That was writer and actor Steve Byron discussing approaches to writing. To find out more about Elysium's work, go to our website www.elysiumtc.co.uk.